With more and more states passing laws allowing the consumption of marijuana, either for medical purposes or for recreational use, there's a big challenge for the police departments around to find those who are driving high. And unlike alcohol, that there is a test, the breathalyzer, that immediately can tell you if someone is driving drunk, there's no such technology for marijuana, but there's already entrepreneurs and researchers working on that. I think this is very important, Nick, because 18 states in the country had already set limits of marijuana in the bullet stream while driving. The problem is that they have to get a warrant for you to give a blood sample. Many people don't want to give blood samples. So the process is really clunky at the time. And by the time that you either had an accident and this develops, it's, it's, not on, it's unlike alcohol. That is something that is already immediate and part of the investigation from the get-go. Now we have Herb Hill. He's a researcher at the Washington State University that is trying to put together the very first breathalyzer for THC. And he's hiring people for the minimum wage to smoke weed at their houses and blow into the device and make the research. The preliminary findings, the device works and it can detect traces of marijuana. It cannot measure the amount, but at least they can detect it. Oh, wow. You'd have to pay me a lot more than minimum wage to uh, smoke weed in, <laughs> in front of cops. But you said it's at your home, right? So You, you do it order. at your home. Okay. You pay for your own weed, and they just compensate you for your time. Wow, man. That, that would really, you know, I think it's extremely important to have breathalyzers for weed. You have to the same way you have alcohol, right? I mean, just because it's, uh, you know, become legal recreationally doesn't mean you should be driving under the influence. Um, but, yeah, that's great. I, mean, I could I could already imagine them standing right outside of the Taco Bell drive through ready to breathalyze everybody with their weed breathalyzers. Uh, could um, you know change a lot of the ways that the courts are, are, are working now in, in, in Colorado? Because up until now, it's kind of been up to the judge to use their own discretion and kind of say, well, I don't think you were that high at the time, so you're good, so we're not going to you know, slam you with this huge DUI fine or something. Because it it's, it's really is. You're right. It's, it's, you cannot detect it the same way you do a BAC test with alcohol. It Correct. simply doesn't enter your bloodstream the same rate. It doesn't read on your breath the same way. So they're going to have to figure something out, and it's cool to see them doing it. No, and the biological process of the, of the THC being broke down in the body is completely different. It gets stored in the fat cells and not in the bloodstream. So a lot of skeptics say, well, the research that you're doing is very it's very hard to accomplish what you're trying to do because the tolerance, the use of marijuana change the way you process the marijuana in your body. The, the, the fact that the, the potency of, the, of different strains, all of that plays into it, but they're doing research. They work hard. They had to go through institutional board review, get federal approval. It took them one year to get all the paperwork needed to start doing research with marijuana. They say that the finding the volunteers was a really quick process. Um, <laughs> but jokes aside, I think this is very important that we are developing this type of test to find if someone is impaired to drive. But at the same time, I think the process is going to be really painful. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, people that have been arrested on, on, on basis of a machine that is brand new and it has to be debugged. And I think the present for me is back in Mexico during the war against drugs and, and the narcs, the government through the army bought this device very similar with a very similar technology mm -hmm. and it turned out to be a fiasco. It turned out to be that most of the devices didn't work and it got a lot of people killed. I got a lot of people in jail that was completely innocent because this device claimed that you know it could sense the particles around of any you know, many different drugs and explosives. It was all fake. It was it was many countries around the world decided not to do business with that company anymore. This is the same technology. And I'm afraid that the, the process of development is still years away. But at the same time, I think this is an important need. It's something that is needed because if you're going to exercise your free choice of getting high, you should also follow the rules and don't put anyone in danger.